Welcome back to yet another video on how to explore the most beautiful countries on a long layover. This time we explore a small island country known for its culture, food and the world famous architecture, Singapore. On my way from India to Indonesia, I chose to have a long layover at Singapore. By doing this, it significantly reduced the cost of my flight between these two countries. Excited to spend 48 hours in Singapore, I decided to take the full advantage of this layover to see the best this port city had to offer. Join me in this journey. Since I hold a Canadian passport, there wasn't any visa requirement for me to enter Singapore. All I had to do was to fill out my travel declaration from Singapore. You can do this also online by visiting their official website and entering all the required details about your flight, entry and exit dates, vaccination status and accommodation. Booking the accommodation probably took the longest time since I could not immediately decide if I wanted to leave the airport or just spend time relaxing and enjoying everything this world's best airport had to offer. And if I were to leave the airport, if I wanted to try the Singapore's unique capsule hotels or stay at a regular hotel that's more comfortable and private. Finally, after spending a couple hours researching the pros and cons, I decided to book a three-star hotel for a night by the Chinatown area of the city, a neighborhood known for its nightlife. I landed at Changi International Airport in Singapore in the afternoon. The immigration process was the smoothest of all. Citizens of certain countries can simply scan their passport at the machine gates and get cleared by immigration as long as you have submitted your online requirements. Please check the list of such countries on that immigration website. It barely took me 10 minutes to complete the whole process and I was at the luggage belt to collect my bags. Singapore doesn't really offer much option with currency exchange at the airport. I simply exchanged some of my leftover Canadian dollars and Indian rupees and was able to get a decent exchange rate. Surprisingly, the airport exchanges do no longer take the bills of rupees 100 and 200. It wasn't a big deal since I carried my international debit and credit cards with me. Once this was sorted out, I logged into the free airport Wi-Fi, got myself an international eSIM, ensured it was properly installed and activated. As I entered the arrival hall, there were multiple modes of transportation that will take you from the airport to your accommodation in the city. Firstly, check with your hotel if they offer a free shuttle service. The second cheapest option is to take a subway to the city center. Not ideal if you have checked in bags. The third cheapest option is to take a paid city shuttle that costs around 10 Singapore dollar or you can always take a taxi to your destination. There is a surcharge of 4 to 9 Singaporean dollar on top of your taxi fare so you will need to weigh these options. By the way, Singapore airport does have luggage storage services for nominal price and then you can sign up for the free airport city tours if you have your layover for less than 10 hours. Make sure though you check the time for these tours on the airport website. Places like Chinatown, Little India are close to many of the city's prime tourist spots. Hence, the prices of accommodation around these areas can be quite hefty. Nonetheless, it's totally worth it since there is so much to do around these neighborhoods. It was evening by the time I made it to my hotel, checked in, freshened up and rested for a bit. One of the first questions I asked my hotel reception was if it was safe to walk around these neighborhoods at night. 
and if there were things that I needed to be careful of. The only thing they had to say were to not step on the religious offerings on the streets since the country was celebrating a cultural celebration. Other than that, it was a go to stay up all night if I wanted to. As I walked out of my hotel, you knew exactly what they meant. There was an ease and sense of safety surrounding these neighborhoods. Filled with pubs, restaurants and shops, the neighborhood of Chinatown is a must visit for anyone wanting to explore Singapore at night. With the hassle-free eSIM and activated data package, I firstly decided to look up the point of interest that were at a walkable distance. While taking a leisurely stroll along the Singapore River and a short walk from my hotel was the Singapore's signature Merlion Park. The Merlion statue with the picture-perfect view of Singapore's skyline is all I could ask for to begin my adventure. This park is a bustling neighborhood with lots of shops. While most people were busy taking their photos, I decided to venture into an ice cream shop to find the world-famous durian ice cream. That experience smells unique and expensive. After spending almost two hours in that area, I decided to continue my walk. Jubilee Bridge is definitely one of the most beautiful bridges I ever walked on. The neon lights cast a perfect reflection in the water against the iconic city skyline. A must-try walk if you were to ask me. I was hoping to be able to walk to my next spot but that short looking walk started to fill forever and I did not want it to miss to see the Singapore skyline from above the ground. Hence, I decided to take a taxi and head it to Singapore Flyer. This enormous ferris wheel shows you Singapore like no other. Make sure you get to it on time since it closes at 10 pm. Marina Bay Sands Hotel is an iconic landmark of Singapore with a giant boat-shaped infinity pool on top of this building. While I admired its beauty and enjoyed the light show from the Merlion Park and the Singapore Flyer, I just did not have enough time or energy to explore this 5-star hotel. You do not need to stay in this hotel to enjoy the infinity pool. You can simply buy separate tickets to the bar and the pool. It was getting late and I wanted to have an early start to the next day. So I grabbed a McDonald's meal on my way to my hotel and said goodnight to my first day in Singapore. Next day, I woke up at 6am, got ready and was on my feet to explore this port city once again. With a fruit bowl in my one hand and a durian smoothie in the other, walking along the Singapore River provided a fresh perspective on what Singapore looks like in the daylight. Today, I had two items on my mind before checking out of my hotel. The first thing on my list was to walk to Sri Mari Amman Temple, an 18th century Hindu temple known for its beautiful architecture and vibrant colors. I was amazed to see that I could make this entire journey on foot and didn't even have to step in the sunlight. Most buildings along the roadside contain a covered roof that is perfect for walking. After offering some flowers at the temple, I was on my way to the next stop, Buddha Tooth Relic Temple, a magnificent temple that housed a giant stupa made from 320 kilograms of gold. The whole neighborhood of Chinatown must be walked if you wish to see some of the iconic filming locations from this neighborhood. If you watch the movie Crazy Rich Asians, this area will be a treat for your eyes. Filled with vibrant colors, several flea markets and mesmerizing murals, this neighborhood is definitely the heart of this country. Also. 
if you wish to exchange some more currency many shops around here will give you a better deal than the airport vendors as i walked back to my hotel i was able to understand how this futuristic city is a pioneer in sustainability and growth the best mode of transportation within the city for a solo traveler is via gojek or grab please download these apps to book a quick and affordable ride i had 16 more hours to go and so much more left to see i had to make a tough choice do i explore more of the city or do i explore the world's most beautiful airport i think the choice was easy